I'm the director of uh, Museum AMA. It's a fisheries and maritime museum lying in Drau. I work with the, uh, the business history of shipping and, and globalization, contemporary history of, of uh, the shipping industry, examining uh, successful business strategies and, and, uh, and also the development of, of maritime know-how. A cornerstone in the work of HMAP has been educating students at all levels. The North Sea case study, in particular, has fostered more students than any other HMAP project. We meet four of these former PhD students. Today I work as an associate professor at Roskilde University in Denmark as uh, within the field of environmental history. My primary role with the HMAP project has been managing the database. A good deal of effort in the early stages of HMAP was invested in summer schools, training workshops and in providing grants. It was all a part of the development of an interdisciplinary research program where history and natural science would work closely together. It's important to bring an interdisciplinary approach to history because there are all sorts of natural, environmental, ecological factors, whatever you like to call them, influence how people live. But historians and biologists come from very different backgrounds. Oh, look what else I found. So it's hardly an easy task to merge the two disciplines together. For example, scrutinizing source material is a central part of an historian's work, a discipline a biologist might not be well versed in. Somebody coming from a scientific background, if they've used historical documents, they might not treat them in the way that a historian would. Um, they might not give the kind of information about the original source material that a historian would require and that we really need to make sure that that, that data set is valid. The HMAP team also had to overcome language issues. Not necessarily uh, English, Danish, American or whichever language, uh, but uh, the disciplinary uh, languages. Uh, each side, if you like, found it difficult to understand what the other side was actually talking about. For the project to succeed, it was apparent that an interoperational environment between the two camps was imperative. By meeting, by reading what the scientists had written, and by encouraging them to read what we had written and uh, just by communication basically, networking it's called these days I think, but uh, it's as simple and as difficult as that. I was unfamiliar with the uh, vocabulary of the fisheries biologist. I didn't know anything about uh, fisheries models and so on. Rene Paulson's PhD was conducted in collaboration with a fishery statistician. In order to find the, uh, the relevant answers, I think in most cases you, re you need to go beyond the limits of, of your own discipline. The original intention was to study the cod fishery. However, something odd became apparent. Soon I realized that uh, the fishermen were not actually fishing for cod, but uh, their main target species was ling. Today, there are hardly any ling left in the area of the North Sea, and René Paulson's PhD reveals why. Probably the uh, ling stock was fished down already in the 19th century, it was very vulnerable to fishing uh, and we could see that the average fish sizes declined dramatically in the 19th century which probably reflect the fact that uh, the fishery was, uh, was having a strong influence on, on the stock. So even a basic t a fishing technology uh, was able to, uh, to reduce the stock quite dramatically. Bo Paulson has worked closely together with a biologist on a study concerning a collapse in 1829 in the herring fishery in Denmark's Limfjord. The challenge in HMAP has partly been to, uh, to overcome this uh, divide between the two cultures in order to be able to solve concrete uh, problems. Nibe lies on the shore of the Limfjord. Its church is furnished with a traditional herring vessel, and the fishermen's names are printed evidence for being the biggest herring fishery in Denmark prior to the 20th century. Its sudden collapse was a mystery. I think one of the reasons why no one has come further before we did is that no historians thought about working together with a biologist. From tax accounts, it was possible for Bo Paulson to extract catch efforts for the fishermen in the area. He then delivered the data to the biologist. We found out then uh, running statistical tests that indeed it, it seemed very likely that with the 
fishing uh, intensity that occurred in the waters just out here in the 1810s and 20s it had a, a very decisive effect on decimating the abundance of, of herring to, to a point of, of uh, at least commercial extinction and, and possibly also a real extinction. What had a disastrous effect on the abundance of the species was the um, expansion of the beach seine uh, fishery. The beach seine method involved one group of fishermen who would hold onto one end of a fishnet at a shoreline. A boat would sail out half of the length of the net and then return to the shore and hand over the other end of the net to a second group of fishermen. Now the two groups dragged the net over the bottom of the sea towards the beach, taking everything with it. That had an impact obviously on the the adult herring, which were caught in great numbers. We also have eyewitness reports from contemporary uh, natural scientists visiting the area saying that barrels and barrels and barrels were filled with uh, herring fry and herring uh, uh, larvae as these uh, herring fishermen got the net ashore. So it, it hits the herring at three life stages at once. These findings were only made possible through the cooperation between an historian and a biologist. I think the most um, valuable lesson is to have uh, an open mind, is not to get fixed into a disciplinary straitjacket, not to say I am a historian and that's not my period or that's not my topic or that's not my approach. Maybert Bayer's PhD looked at catches of haddock, plaice and cod from the Danish coast of the North Sea in the 16th and 17th centuries was able to calculate actually the total catches of the at the North Sea coast during that period, which could be compared to the catches today and the catches in the early 20th century. And once again, the fishing effort of the past came as a surprise. The catches were much higher than we really had expected for that that kind of, for the technology which were available at the time. HMAP's interdisciplinary mindset will be carried out into the future. I see no reason to restrict myself just to, to one single discipline. Once you've been opened up to an interdisciplinary mindset and you've really um, come to grasp what it means, you, you can't actually go back to a single discipline because it doesn't seem sufficient somehow. It seems to only give you part of the story. There are plenty of literature saying that, that, it's, that it's desirable to have interdisciplinary approaches, but not many people get the chance to actually do it in a large scale as, as we've had the chance to.